Hi, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to talk a little more about radians and specifically talk about why they are called radians in the first place. So why is it called a radian? Well, the word radian sounds a little bit like radius and that's because they're related. So the radian is related to the radius. If we think about a circle, a circle has a radius. That's the length from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle. And so the idea of a radian comes from taking that radius and drawing it along the arc of the circle. So we're basically going to imagine if I took that radius length and I wanted to draw an angle that spanned that amount of distance on the circle, what would that angle be? So if we take the radius, spread it out over the circle, and we do an angle that's that long, we call this one radian. So one radian is the angle required to draw out an arc with a length that is equal to the radius. So pretty cool. We take the radius, whatever that is, and we draw it out an angle that covers that much distance, and we call that one radian. All right, so this is what we have for one radian, but how does this relate to our notion that a full rotation is two pi radians? Well, let's just try to repeat this process throughout the whole revolution, the whole circle, and see what we get. So I'm going to start with one radian and then repeat it. Now I have two radians. I'm gonna keep doing this, so I have three radians, four radians, five radians, and six radians. So at this point, I'm at six radians and I'm almost filling in that whole circle. I've almost gone a full revolution. But we have this little bit left. What does that little bit mean and what are we gonna do with that? So this is by no means a formal proof for how this works, but just a little illustration to hopefully make it make some intuitive sense to you. So we know that the full rotation of the circle is two pi. And if we do two multiplied by pi, we're doing two times 3.14 approximately, of course, and we're going to get 6.28. So this means that the full circle is 6.28 radians, which makes sense. We were pretty close. We're already at six. So this must mean that that little bit left over is 0.28 radians. So again, this isn't super formal. I'm not like proving that it's two pi for one revolution, but if we assume that is true, we know that it's two pi. This kind of makes sense that if we look at a radian as the measure of one radius in arc length, we can do six of them plus a little more gets us to that two pi. All right, that is it. Just wanted to give you a little background into radians and why they are called that. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.